All right, thanks for tuning in everybody. Today I'm gonna to go over something that I get a lot of questions about. If you're new here, my name is Stakati. I am an artist, songwriter, and producer. And on this channel, I like to make videos for other artists and producers to show them tips, techniques, and concepts of how they can do a lot of this stuff themselves. Today, what we're gonna be going over is how to make chords in Ableton. Now, writing chords seems like it's a very simple thing, but there's a lot of ways that you can do it. And it's very easy to kind of get stuck in the same way of doing things. So I wanna give you guys a couple different ways so that when you approach your next project, you might be inspired in a way that you aren't usually. Now I will say for my favorite of these techniques, you do need the newest version of Ableton. You can get by without it, it's just a lot easier with it. If you want to see this exact same tutorial for FL Studio or Logic, let me know in the comments below and I'll go ahead and make those videos for you guys. And one last thing I say before we jump in is there is no absolutes in music. This isn't the only way to make chords. And if you guys are liking this content, it would really help if you guys would take a second and like and subscribe on this video, as well as comment below more videos like this that you would want to see. But without rambling on too much, let's go ahead and jump over to the the computer and I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here we have a blank Ableton session open and all we have open is a piano. So first what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just uh, command shift M to be able to make a MIDI clip. And I do wanna preface this by saying that this might be more of a beginner tutorial, but there should be some stuff in here for even people that already know how to do a lot of this stuff. But just to show you a little bit of what's going on, we have our piano roll here over on the left hand side, as well as our scale right here. Now, this is really what is different about the new Ableton and the way that they've made making chords way easier. So what we want to do is click on this and go to any scale. Now, if you're just starting out, I recommend staying in either the major or minor scale. Usually what you hear a lot of the music is a minor scale. And then this part is really up to you. If you're making music for yourself and you know your own vocal range and your register, then pick something in that. But if you're trying to just make something random, then go ahead and click whatever. I'm going to go with F sharp here. So now all of the notes of F sharp are highlighted in this kind of brown orange color here. So that means any note that we place along those those notes are going to work in our scale. Now, we don't have to fold it to scale. You do that by clicking this little scale button right here and that only gives you the options for F sharp minor now. You can undo that at any time. And so here's how I'll show you how to write your basic chord. So go ahead and flatten that to scale and let's put our first note on F sharp minor just to keep it easy. Um, remember, there is no rules to music. So at any point in time, you can start on a different note, especially if we're talking to beginners here. It's not a bad idea to kind of learn the basics of the rules so then you can learn how to break them later. To start off simply right here, I'm just gonna put my first note on F sharp minor, click option or alt and then click click and drag up to make a copy of that note and do that twice, skipping one note each time, how you can see here. Then grab that note, hit shift and hit up on your keyboard. Now you have a different voicing of that original F sharp minor chord. It's a little bit more spread out and gives you more of an open feel in the chord. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Perfect. So now a very easy way to write more chords is select all of that and hit command and D. That's going to duplicate it over for you. Now with your arrow keys, you can just move these around and it's going to keep that shape of that chord. And because we have it folded to scale, it's not going to put any notes out of our key. So it's either going to change it to a major or minor chord for us, making it very, very simple to write chords. So I can kind of do this without even listening to it. And it's most likely um, going to sound okay. And remember, you can always change some timing. So let's on this last one, mix it up a little bit. And instead of having the note take up a full bar, let's cut it in half and have it do a half of a bar. So let's see what this progression we have right here sounds like now. And there's some plugins out there that can make this whole process a lot easier. There's a lot of them. You've probably heard of Scalar. You've heard of Forager. Um, you've heard of Cthulhu. These are different types of chords that can kind of control the MIDI for you. So I'm going to go ahead and drag Scalar in here. And Scalar is unique because there's a lot of different types of songs in it built in already. So if I show you what I'm working with with Scalar right here, I can go ahead and come into these songs and there is different types of music or you can go through the scales. Now, what's awesome about Scalar is it shows you a ton of different types of chords inside of each scale and you can actually change each chord to be a different voicing. What I'm gonna do here just to kind of play around is go into songs and if you come in here to common progressions, you're gonna see a lot of the most common stuff and these will be recognized to you. Now, don't think that, oh, I can't use those because they're common, everyone 
everyone uses them. Most of the music that you actually hear, especially on the radio or in pop music, is a lot of the exact same chord progressions. It's just how you play it, what instrument you play it on, the timing. Um, there's so many different ways to make a chord progression your own, and you really don't have to reinvent the wheel. So I actually haven't used this right here, this colored one, but let's just see um, what that sounds like. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, and let's see what uh, chords it's giving us. So it's showing you down here the one, two, three, four, five. That's basically just corresponding with the first note of the scale, the second note of the scale, the third, and so on. And it's showing you that the first is a major, the second's a minor. Right here at the top, these four, it's what it's saying. This is their colored scale. So let's hear what it sounds like. See? That sounds beautiful to me. So let's just go ahead and drag these in right down here like this. And Scalar is cool because you can do a lot of stuff with it. This is a very powerful plugin. I'm sure that you've all heard of it. And if you haven't, go ahead and uh, give it a chance. Because especially when you're having some beat block, some writer's block or anything like that, this is always there for you. And for some reason, a lot of people have some weird ideas that using things like this is cheating but there is no rules in music the end listener at the end of the day they don't care if you use scalar or if you created the chords 100% yourself or if you played them right there in that moment or you spent six weeks on them they really don't care they just care about the vibe and the sound at the end of it so once you have some chords in here what you can do is hit this drag button and you can actually drag it right out into your Ableton so then the chords and the MIDI are there for you now let's duplicate it grab it and merge those together so we have all of the chords and kind of see what we're working with here. Now obviously we're in a different scale. We're still folded to the F sharp minor. So we know from what Scalar told us that this is in A minor. So I'm just going to drop that to A minor. It's technically C major, but again, same thing. If you see that I switched C major, now there's no um, off keys or anything like that. So you can use either, but I'm not getting into a theory lesson here. We're just going to go over some chords. So let's kind of hear what we have working with here and see maybe how we can change the vibe of this or add a little bit to it. Get a metronome going. All right, so let's give that a little bit of bounce. And this is kind of a B part of the tip, which is a lot of the times people load chords in like this and they don't really tweak it. And that's fine, but if you're looking for something new to do, it's not a bad idea to kind of move the timing of the start of some of these chords around. Let's go ahead and start these a little bit early. Let's cut out this fourth chord on this one and extend this one out to the end. Do the same thing with the chords starting early on this side. Chop these back so we're not getting overlap right now. And let's kind of hear what we have and how the vibe is a little bit more bouncy there. My advice is for songwriters and artists is just kind of see where those chords take you. Don't try to force them into a box unless that's some sort of practice or something that you're doing. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I want to make a this type beat or I want to make a song for this type artist. That's a really good practice. But sometimes you need to have a more kind of creative feel to what you're doing so that you're not getting locked into a specific style of writing. Because the more that you can work on different ways to get to the same end point, it's like more tools in your tool belt. So a very good method and something that I advise for pretty much everybody is just constantly try new things. Don't try every new thing. Say you have a template of how you work, change one thing in that template and make five or 10 songs with it, then change another thing. And by doing that, you have the pieces that remain somewhat stable and that allows you to be more creative with those small variables that end up changing. But I really do think that these are some simple ways to write amazing chords. And if you guys feel like you grasped all of this and you want even more complicated ones, this video is already getting long. I have no problem going and making a lot more in-depth video. I've had to really write some complicated complex jazz or gospel type chords or some specific type of music. All right, I hope you guys got some value from that video, but if you guys want a specific video going over how to do this same type of thing in either Ableton or Logic, I have no problem doing that. I use all three of those on a daily basis. Just let me know what you guys want to see. If there's any other types of videos, go ahead and check me out on TikTok. That is where I post most of the time, as well as checking me out on Spotify. We drop a new song every week on Friday. Every idea that I'm going to come up with for videos are going to be from what you guys give me. I appreciate all you guys for taking the time out of your day for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your week and I will see you again next week. Peace out.